Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, uh, before we start the program, I just would like to introduce to you uh, the dignitaries that we have on the high table. Uh, today, we have a very important program, as you all know, uh, but uh, we're going to thank each and every one of you for taking your time in your busy schedule to make sure that you are here with us to grace this important occasion, which is a book that we're going to launch today. But it's not only launching of the book, but also a lecture, which is going to be of great importance to all of us who are here, uh, because we know the caption of the book is very, very important. Tribalism at trial. It is something that we need to understand very, very well. Because we are living in a world of new civilization. And uh, a world of civilization, the mindset of the people is very, very, very important. Like in every civilized country you went to, there are two words which you normally heard from the society. Most likely. When you go to England, there are two words which you all the time heard from the society. Which is, these two words are very, very important. Which is please and thank you. Please and thank you. This you heard, even when you are in Germany, you heard these two words. Danke, bitte. This made up the society's mindset that they consider one another. It is very, very important. So these are the type of lectures that we are going to have because we all know the, the person that we are going to have who is going to give us the lecture, which is a scholar, a lecturer, a mentor, who is by the name of Hamajaite. He is here with us at the high table. Sir, you are welcome. Well, uh, let me introduce to you all the members on the high table. We also have Bubba Ture, Mr. Bubba Ture, sir, you're welcome. We also have Jalal Kamara, the party leader of GAP. Honorable, you're welcome. We also have uh, Mr. Lamin Jamme. Honorable, you're welcome. You're welcome, Honorable. Lamin, you're a little bit late. <laughs> we also have VP Mohammed uh, Bojang. Honorable, you're welcome. We also have Alaji Sawane, demanding president. Honorable, you are welcome. Well, these are the people that we have on the high table who are going to grace the occasion with us. Uh, it's a very important occasion, and we all know writing a book is very, very important. But we're living in a society which you know that uh, we didn't uh, value that much. That is why we are encouraging Mr. Nabani all the time to come up with such gestures for the society. It is very, very important for posterity. It might not benefit you and I, but it will benefit the children and our children's children tomorrow. Because they will know from that book, the society that we live in, they can understand the mindset of the society they are living in. So it is very, very, very important. So that is why, Mr. Nabani, we are encouraging you more and more to come up with more of these uh, type of books We really inspire us. But before we go for that, I take your time. I just would like to uh, go through the program guide, what we're going to have, uh, which is uh, I'm going to make sure that we have a prayer first. And uh, after the prayer, we are going to have uh, uh, the lecture on tribalism by uh, Honorable Hamajaitia. Then we're going to also have uh, a poem, which is very, very important. And uh, this one supposed to be done by uh, uh, Imam Fati, but he's not around. And uh, I think uh, Mr. Nabani has informed me that somebody's going to do it. And uh, after that, we're going to have the review of the book, 
and the introduction of the author. Who is the author and also what inspired the author to write the book. We're going to have that. And from there, then we have the book launching itself. So we're going to have a successful program. So first of all, I would like to uh, call on. I would like to call on uh, somebody. I don't know who is going to give us uh, prayers in... Uh, who are going to who is going to give us prayers? Boja. I think Aka. Let me welcome Ustaz Mohammed Bojang uh, to give us our prayers before we start the program proper. Mr. Bojang, please. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم ملك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين عنمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين 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 اللهم مالك الملك تؤتي الملك من تساء وتنزع الملك ممن تساء وتعزو من تساء وتذل من تساء بيدك الخير إنك على كل شيء قدير تولج الليل في النهار وتولج النهار في الليل وتخرج الحي من الميت وتخرج الميت من الحي وترزق من تساء بغير حساب يا رحمن الدنيا والآخرة ورحيمهما توثي منهما من تساء وتمنع منهما من تساء إرحمنا في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حبيل مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسن وفي الآخرة حسن أكينا أذاب النار ربنا لا تنزل قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوحاء سبحان ربك في إزدة وما يسكون والسلام على المصالين uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Mohammed uh, uh, Jamme, no Mohammed Bojang, uh, for that prayer. So then, I think I'm going to call the man himself uh, so that we can have uh, the lecture. So I'm going to welcome on stage uh, a lecturer, a scholar, and a mentor who is of great importance in this society when we come in terms of education. Uh, he has uh, been uh, uh, contributing to this society so many years. And uh, we all know that he is of great importance. He's a man of, uh, you know, a man who is so educated. So I'm going to call on stage, Sir Hama Jaite, for the lectures. Can you come closer? You can have a seat just here. Okay. I guess this one? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Okay. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. Thank you very much, Mr. Mbub, for that wonderful introduction. But to follow protocols, in the inception, I must or I am obliged morally to extend my salutations to all the distinguished guests on the high table and uh, my greetings to 
to the audience in front of me, to the media, and more especially to Mr. Navan, who invited me uh, to be part of this August event of launching his new book called Tribalism on Trial. After thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and soliciting his praise upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is a religious obligation upon every Muslim, because even the occasion that we are celebrating right now is part and parcel, is central to Islam, because it's an addition, a plus in the enhancement of knowledge. So for that matter, it is more Islamic than conventional. But as we are assigned to dilate or to give or deliver lectures on tribalism, which is the title of the book, Tribalism on Trial, I think uh, it is a great challenge, a formidable one, for me to share my thoughts in the midst of giants who are on the high table and who are standing to listen to me or sitting down listening to me. But nonetheless, we're going to take the challenge at least to shed some light, the little we know, on this very highly relevant topic called tribalism. I always say this, and it, is, it has become a principle in my presentation of every academic or intellectual significance. That if you, don't, if, you, if you don't have a term or you don't have a name for something, in your cultural consciousness, it is always difficult and it is always a contradiction in your understanding of reality that presents itself before you. Either socially, politically, economically, and ultimately universally. What is a tribe? It is not Mandinka, not Olaf, not Jola, not Fula. It is none of the Gambian languages which, call, which has tribalism as a word. Though it could be there as a social reality, but as a word, carrying or pregnant with a meaning, a connotation which is more negative than positive. I don't think there is any Gambian language that carries this meaning, tribalism. It is English language. I think the origin could be derived from Latin or Roman, which means tree. Yeah, because in Roman society, society was originally divided into three, then into 30, then ultimately into 35. So this word has some currency during the advent of colonialism because the Europeans, they used this term to contradistinct, to, 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 to distinguish between the European culture and the cultures of the people to whom they found themselves, or the, the, the people whom they want to colonize. So they call them tribes. It is a group of people, to define it, who are staying in one social milieu, that is an environment, sharing the same value culturally, having the same interests, I mean, together, and having, in most cases, the same language and adhering or being servants to, to one single leader. This is the definition of what is called a tribe. But when ism is added there, for every noun or for every verb in English language, when ism is added, it becomes an ideology. And when it becomes an ideology, it carries very, very, very negative connotations. So this is why tribalism Tribe is a reality, it's a social reality, it's an entity, it is a unit in society, but when it carries the isms, it becomes evil. So this is the difference between a tribe 
and tribalism when it becomes or it is converted into a colonial ideology, an instrument to oppress people whom they regarded as primitive, against they themselves whom they regarded as the most advanced and sophisticated people. And it's, it's, it's still playing on our consciousness. I wish I could express these thoughts profoundly in Mandinka or in Wolof or in any other Gambian language. But unfortunately, we are colonized and we are educated and we are pre-programmed to think colonially. I'm sorry to say that, but this is the reality. What is tribalism? Well, as Muslims, we don't need to go and quote an old Tuba book. I will not do it. It's because it's a manifestation of my second class academic sophistication. But I would go and quote my references, which are going to be validated by the divine source, the Quran. Because we've already defined tribalism and who is a tribalist and what is a tribe. A tribe is a social entity, a unit in a society. So there is no problem of having a tribe. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one of the chapters called Surah Al-Fatir, Allah has clearly explained to us why there is diversity in unity and unity in diversity. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ خَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ In chapter of the Romans and in the other chapter called Al-Fatir which means creation. Allah says he created many different things to establish his power. But that power can never be perceived or understood except by those who are endowed with knowledge. And among those, I mean, features is the difference in our colors, the differences in our languages, the differences in our climes, our environments. In fact, even our worldview, our understanding of a single fact can create diversity in our I mean, understanding of that very fact that is established before our eyes. So this is why the Quran is the term of reference, which is valid for all time and space. It, what it requires is for us to just exercise some intellectual power in order to be able to derive the truth, the, un, the, 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 the infallible, infallible truth and the authentic one out of the Quran and use it as a social principle to cleanse our societies of all this evil called tribalism. Tribalism in short is evil. Tribalism in short is evil, it's heinous. And there is no evil greater than tribalism. Mm. There is no evil damaging, harmful, destructive to human existence and human dignity and honor more than tribalism. So you must understand that. This is why in the Holy Quran, in chapter 28 called Suratul Qasas, narrations, the basis. And we see the Romans divided their societies into three divisions. You have the upper, you have the middle, and you have the lower. The lower. These are the dregs of the society. These are the wretched ones. So afterwards, they divided society into three, or into 30 groups, divisions. Then ultimately, or finally, into 35. And we know that Western civilization, either the concept, the procedure, the substance, and even the consequences were all derived from Roman civilization and Greek thinking pattern. It was the Greeks who supply Western civilization with the way they think, abstract thinking. So, in that matter, the Quran says, Surah Al-Qasas, the chapter called Narration. Look what Fir'auna alayhi salah, what Fir'auna alayhi la'anatullah. Pharaoh, because the Pharaonic civilization even preceded that of the Roman or the Greek civilization. So here is a sign of international interaction between two civilizations. Egypt, the cradle of human civilization, and the Romans and the Greeks, the source of European civilization. We say the word tribalism gained 
I mean, currency during the force, the emergence of colonialism. When the Europeans came out of their caves, out of either curiosity, or out of adventure, love for adventure, or out of something nobody knows, but these are all uh, laws of history, and they are dynamic in, 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 in directing the events or the activities or the actions of men. You know, they came to Africa as an example. They went to Asia, everywhere in the world. But we're going to take Africa as an example. You know, they coin or they choose this word called tribalism. That is to contrast between their civilization and culture and between ours. Then the primitive people were called tribes and they were called nations. So a nation and a tribe, which means tribes are uncivilized and primitive. Cannibalism is... I mean, is the, is, the, is the order of the day among the primitive people, but for them, they are scientific, advanced, and developed, so they are called a nation. I mean, to make it short, Pharaoh, in that very chapter, listen to what Allah is saying. Tarsin Mim, these are the, the words, some of the chapters in the Holy Quran open with. Tilka ayatul kitabul mubin. These are the signs of this very book, which is manifest and clear. Natlu alayka min naba imusa wa fir'auna bil haq. We are going to narrate, that is from verse 1 to verse 6. Allah is talking to Muhammad, and by extension, Allah is talking to everybody who is a Muslim. Allah says, We are going to narrate to you part of the story, or some of the story of Moses and Fir'aun. In truth, for those who believe. Allah says, Inna fir'awna ala fil ard. Fir'awna was a bigot on, in the land. Pharaoh was a bigot, a self-conceited leader in the, in the land. And what Fir'awna did? Fir'awna divided that Egyptian society, which is African, pure African stock. There was no mongrelization and there was no mixture of any other race. Any, anything other than that is a historical lie and fabrication. What did Pharaoh did? Pharaoh divided society. He divided the Egyptian society into sections and into divisions. And he would oppress one group against the other. He has said, if ta'ifa, and what was he doing? Yudabbaha abna'ahum. He was slaughtering their male child, children. Wayastahi nisa'ahum, and he was leaving their baby, girl, 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 the, the girls. I mean, look at this, racial cleansing. This is why tribalism is the beginning of racialism. Tribalism is the beginning of racial discrimination. Even apartheid has a root in tribalism as an origin and a seed is the formative seed that grow out without control to that le higher level of national racial discrimination. So, Pharaoh did that. He divided society into divisions because foreigners were there as well. That were the children of Israel. They were foreigners because actually they migrated from one location to another location, but they were in Egypt. And Pharaoh was doing what? Social division. Not based on labor, but based on my identity and the culture that the person was identified with. So this is tribalism in practice, or tribalism in action. Allah says, Yastad Ifa. He was oppressing one group against the other, killing their male ch children, and leaving their, uh, 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 the, 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 the daughters, I mean, to leave. Look at it. This is called causing a disproportionate statistical, I mean, number between the male and the female population in Egypt. Look at this practice. And Allah says, وَنُرِيدُ أَن نَمُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ أُسْتُدْئِفُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Allah says, I want to give my blessings to those who are oppressed in the land, then I would make them be leaders, and I will in turn turn them into becoming the inheritors of the land of Egypt. That's the good people. 
ونمكن لهم في الارض and we will empower them in the land ونري فرعون وحامان and i would so pharaoh and his i mean vice president the army commander called haman ما كانوا يحذرون what they were trying to avoid i will just drown them in the red sea or rather not the red sea we are going to make some correction concerning this term all of us in school we are taught there is a sea called red sea that's the biggest lie ever said by man there is no sea called red sea but there is a sea called red sea r e e d because it's a stick stick grows in the sea there is no red sea there is no red sea in the world but there are red sea because grass so 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 much grass grow inside that very sea that's the what they call red sea so this is the basis of re, uh, tribalism this is how the quran present is to earth since adam since adam was created just listen to this very interesting episode between adam and between the devil satan when allah created adam from mud a clay when you call it mud you don't call it clay except and until when it is exposed to heat it's when you call it clay but it is mud in principle so this is the problem with colonial language <laughs> yeah so this is a problem but anyway I wish I could just deliver what I want to say in my local language. Not even local, but it's international. In the sense that the British say anybody who cannot write and speak English is an illiterate. There is no illiterate bigger than the British because they cannot write Mandinka or speak Mandinka. But I and you, or you and I, because they say when I'm speaking, I must say you and I. But I would say I and you. <laughs> well, that's revol revolutionary radicalism. And we are still on that path. But what is important here, when Allah created Adam, look at the beginning, the seed of tribalism. When Allah created Adam, alayhi salam, and empowered Adam with what is called knowledge, Knowledge is not the amount of information you are given from nursery to your PhD. That's not knowledge. That is information. Our problem as Africans, we consider information as knowledge and we don't see knowledge as knowledge. Knowledge is simply honesty, sincerity, and good conduct. This is knowledge. Your PhD is absolutely useless as long as it is unable to transform your moral status and benefit society as we are witnessing in the Gambia here. Because it is not translating who you are. Your human dignity, your human responsibility, your human obligation. And who are you? Your, your responsibility with Allah, with society and with yourself. It is not manifested in the PhD. The PhD makes you who you are, but you never made the PhD what it is. So this is our problem. Let's take them back to nursery school. This is not bigotry. This is not bigotry. This is something that is wrong because of colonial education. They use my English language as a criteria to measure my intelligence. Absolutely wrong. But rectify. Then he is Tom and Fenko. Tom, Tom and that that you Tom and Jerry. That Gambian is Tom and Jerry. So here is tribalism. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a, an added value to Adam. Because Adam is going to be responsible, I mean to build, I mean to maintain, to construct human civilization. And he's going to be the only being that is endowed and given the power of knowledge called al-ilm. Allah give, give Adam a knowledge. When Allah asks the angels to proceed out of respect and in execution of Allah's command before Adam, after he was created, 
completed, perfected, and given the knowledge, and given a secret that, were not, that was not given to the angels. There was, a, there was a creature among them called Iblis. That Iblis refused brazenly and blatantly to execute the command of Allah. Thinking that Allah has asked him to bow before that entity. Not knowing that Allah is commanding him to execute Allah's supreme command of prostrating himself out of respect for that being called Adam. Because he's going to be the vicegerent, the deputy, and he's going to be the ambassador of Allah on this earth. And what did Iblis do? What did Iblis do afterwards? When Allah asked him, why didn't you do as I commanded? Iblis, just out of that sense of superiority complex disrespect for the divine interrogation Iblis says Ana khairun minhu, I am better than him look at this very interesting verse Ana khairun minhu, I am better than Adam you know why because you created me out of fire and you created him out of mort it is the extreme form of ignorance. Because Iblis never knew that even the origin, the source of fire is from mort. That is something that is visible before everybody's eye. I mean, all the fires we are seeing or hearing in the world, the source of its ignition is from where? From the soil. The 18 components of the soil, among them fire is there. And when we say water, hydrogen, and carbon, at the end of the day will come out of the mud or the soil. So here is an extreme form of ignorance. Is then a tribalist, somebody who believes in tribalism, is the most ignorant human being. And he is a brother of the same father and mother to Iblis. This is why he says, Ana khairun minhu. Khalaqtani min narin wa khalaqtahu min tainin. Because of that answer, look at that, I mean, stupid answer, which has no basis, and has no logic, and has no significance. Allah has driven him out of his blessings to the day of judgment. And he is the only creature or being that judgment was passed even before the day of judgment. Because of tribalism. Because of superiority complex. This is why a tribalist and anybody espousing tribalism or propagating the idea is, is, is a brother or half full or half brother to Iblis. From Adam alayhi salam, let's come to Nuha. When Allah sent Nuha with that commission or that mission to call people to monotheism, among the wealthy and the powerful influential sector or section of Nuha's society, Look what they are saying. When you go to the Quran, you will read a chapter called Suratul Hud, verse number 25, 26, 27. Listen to what the people are saying. When Nuha called them to Allah, they say, We don't see any preference for you, Nuha, above us. You are nothing but a human being. And the people who are following you, are just people who have no idea they are the lowest of the law in our society or they are people who apparently they have no idea they just imitate things without knowing the consequences of that things that is tribal or social or oh, name it it's another form of tribalism i say tribalism is the lowest you go and have discrimination racial discrimination and now what do we have in the world we should not stop where the Tubab asks us to stop. We have tribalism and it is not in our consciousness. It is important. And we are using and even doing it and expressing it in our interactions with each other. And we have racial discrimination, apartheid, we all, all of us had about it. Isn't it? What is the third level? I want everybody to join me in thinking about what is the third level now. International or universal? What do we have now? In fact, the world is divided into only two groups, not third. They will call you the third wall. There is no third wall. There is the fourth wall 
and the no wall. The first wall and the no wall. The first wall produces and the no wall consumes. That's the only thing. That's the bottom line. So don't be fooled by the political nomenclatures. Third wall, second wall, first wall. No, it is not of your making. It never came out of your consciousness. It's somebody's consciousness. And you are using it unconsciously and not knowing the meaning. This is the problem. Look at the reality. You need three different levels to understand reality. A fact must exist before you. There must be a feeling between the fact and you. And that would, could only come to one of your senses. The five senses. And that fact must be transmitted to your brain. For the brain to analyze the fact. And the fourth level, there must be a, a prior information. What is called previous information. Stored in your brain for the brain to give you the correct analysis and answer. So... Nuha actually, his people, I mean, they were tribalists. They say, Nuha, the people following you are the dredges of society. These are the wretched ones, so we are not going to follow you. But let's come back to Egypt, I mean, with Pharaoh. In Suratul Al-Zukhrufa, that is a chapter number 48 in the Holy Quran. Listen to what Pharaoh is doing. وَنَادَى فِرْعَوْنَ فِي قَوْمِهِ وَقَالْ فِرْعَوْنَ announced among his people and say أَلَيْسَ لِي مُلْكِ مِسْرَ Am I not the ruler of Egypt? وَهَذِهِ الْأَنْهَارِ And these rivers are flowing under my control. أَفَلَا تُبْسِرُونَ Don't you perceive what I'm saying? أَمْ أَنَا خَيْرٌ Or am I better than who? Am ana khairun min hadha alladhi huwa muhin wa la yakadu yubin Allahu akbar Nko alimbatu bandani mfumande nga kawala damande You see Pharaoh Pharaoh is the principal architect of tribalism and racialism Look at this Pharaoh is comparing himself to one of the most righteous I mean servants of Allah called Moses he says, this, uh, I am the king of Egypt. And the rivers of Egypt are running or flowing under my control, which is a lie. Because if that is true, the river would never be able to drown him. Look at that oxymoronic mentality. Contradiction. You get the point? So he says, I'm, am I better? Dan min hadha in Arabic. Arabic is a language. It has this linguistic characteristic. So powerful that if you understand it, sometimes it makes you see Look how, even in English literature. Listen to this. Am ana khairun, am I better? Min hadha, demonstrative pronouns. Alladhi, relative pronoun. Huwa, third person singular. Three factors to emphasize that he considers himself more superior to Moses. Tribalism. Because of differences in tribe. Moses was a, a son of Israel. And Pharaoh was the king of Egypt. But look what, what happened. And in order to, for him to validate or to qualify it. Stupidly for that matter what he says. He says, if at all Allah has descended gold, falawla unzila alayhi aswira min zahabin, aw ja'a ma'ahu al-malaika muhtarineen. I would say that he is equal to me. Had Allah descended gold, bracelets to him, or the angels came in ranks, as soldiers, as the soldiers, I mean, make their ranks for me, Pharaoh, being the ruler of Egypt. But what happened actually? And this is actually, this is why it's very interesting to dilate more on this topic, not on this only occasion, but everywhere in the Gambia. Anybody who is espousing, preaching, propagating, representing, expressing, verbally, in action. Yeah. The third wall, isn't it? 
<laughs> so there is no third world. That's the first world. We are consumers. Biti kitia yala, biti kota. So it's over. We must go beyond that ordinary superficial thinking. So let's come to that. I think you are hearing me, huh? Okay, look. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look, this is the most important segment in the verse. Allah says, فَاسْتَخَفَّ قَوْمَهُ فَأَتَاعُهُ إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا قَوْمًا فَاسِقِينَ So anybody who is espousing, propagating, expressing, or even doing tribalism, either in word or in action, Allah says, you are fooling the people. فَاسْتَخَفَّ قَوْمَهُ He fooled his people and hold them in disdain and contempt. فَأَتَاعُهُ They follow his command of superiority. I mean, demonstrating that they are superior to the children of, over the children of Israel. But look what Allah is saying. Allah says, إِنَّهُمْ Pharaoh and his entourage كَانُوا They were common people فَاسِقِينَ who are transgressors and rebellious. So tribalism is another sign. A very advanced sign of what? Rebelliousness and transgression. No, ignorance is already mentioned. Because only an ignorant person would say, I am better than the other person. Yeah. Only an ignorant person. If you are better than the other person, then you don't need any other person to support you. Simple logic. And you cannot live alone independently. That's why every independence is a relative independence. So for that matter, tribalism, these are the points in the Holy Quran from which we can gather facts that are infallible and authentic and make it a basis for our, as a springboard for us to jump to another level. What is tribalism? We say tribe is a reality, it's a social unit. But when the ISM is added there, it becomes evil. The connotation is bad. The meaning is bad. And it is derogatory. It doesn't make any sense. But you are better than who? But tribalism in the Gambia sometimes, because of our parochial view and understanding of this very big social reality, we tend to just limit it in society at the social level. There is intellectual tribalism. What is intellectual tribalism? It's what I've just, I mean, casually said in the course of my discourse. I have my PhD, and it is in the Gambia, and it is well established. It's called the intellectual elites, or the elites. The elites, they don't consider anybody, if you are not part and parcel of their group, you are not considered. Then this is intellectual tribalism. Isn't it? And you have the civil servant inter uh, tribalism. Mm. The civil servants, they know how to steal. <laughs> they are the only experts, they know how to steal. This is a cartel. They will not invite you in that cartel as long as you are not part and parcel of that Alibaba and the 40 thieves. It is a tribal, it is a civil servant <laughs> tribalism. Isn't it? So tribalism, even economic tribalism, now we are in hell, but living in the earth. You know why? Because the merchants are controlling our destiny. They are controlling our food. These are called the economic tribalists. So you don't have to limit tribalism into that. Mandinka, Jola, Fula. No, no. These are just foolish ideas. Because when we say seal in our language, you know why? I want to dilate in our local language. Because the word seal is from settlement. We are a people settling in one env geographical environment, but having diverse languages. So when we say seal, it is not applying to tribe, tribe. Because tribe is a completely different thing. This is why in English language, the word tribe can mean so many things. Even I can even call you the audience a tribe because you are a group of people. So we, I can call you a tribe, but we are a seal. And seal means because you settle in one place and you share the same value and have the same interest and the same advantage and you're having the same expectation for the future. So how many forms of tribalism have I given? 
economic tribalism, academic tribalism, civil servant tribalism, and even governance tribalism is there. You know, any governance that is not correct, and that is not righteous, and that is not in the interest of the people, is considered a tribalist, a tribalist governance, way of governance. So tribalism should never be limited in that, because we should never use the term as it is used by the Tobago, because the Tobago use it specifically to demote you. So you don't use it to demote yourself, but use it to clarify your vision and make your eye more clear so that you can see the facts in your society. <laughs> we must go beyond this superficiality. We are given information, we've not been given knowledge. Knowledge is acquired and cultivated, but it is not transmitted. You go into research, you ask yourself, validate the information, relearn yourself, reject everything and get the new one. Compare it to the previous, it gives you a new entity of knowledge. But this wall, 100 years, I'm not envisioning anything that means development for the black people in the Gambia. When I say the black people, I'm not generalizing. I'm trying to just give a geographical specification. The whole world, multi dunia minka bekoma for the black people. The Indians have gone. The Chinese are gone. The Malaysians, the Indonesians, everybody is gone. And we are here. Why? Because our genes, our genes, intellectual genes have been controlled and manipulated. And it only be reformed and rearrange if we understand these realities. So tribalism is a disease. Tribalism is a, is a calamity. So, uh, uh, so uh, uh, tribalism can only be supported by somebody who is the most ignorant and who has actually forfeited his true humanity. Somebody who has not connection to religion or to God. Somebody who even abuses his own humanity. It has no space, it has no place in human, true human conscience. There is no place for uh, tribalism in, 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 in a clean and clear conscience. Because that's separation. And separation means if human beings are to separate themselves from each other, then there wouldn't be a baby, and there wouldn't be, society would not multiply, then mankind has to go into extinction. So all the tribalists are the brothers of Satan. All the tribalists are ignorant. All the tribalists are evil. All the tribalists are malicious. And the only person who stands and represents tribalism is that person who is living in insecurity and in uncertainty. Because of that tribalistic practice and presentations, he thinks when he is able to recruit some people and instill that, I mean, unnatural fear or abnormal fear in their minds, they will support him because he thinks that if he doesn't do that, he is not secured either in his interest or in his body or in his existence as an individual in society. Then it is born of what? Either monopoly, self-interested person, an evil person, an insecure person, a person living in superstition and insecurity and uncertainty and oppression and suppression. These are the tribalists. This is the only definition that we can give to a tribalist. At that, uh, on, on that note, well, I think I would I'll come to the end of my lectures, a very bad lecture for that matter. And uh, I would thank everybody once more and say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, just as I told you, the man is a man 
who have a monopoly of uh, a man who has a monopoly of knowledge. He is a man with a monopoly of knowledge. You will agree with me. Honestly, he has given us a brief account of what tribalism is all about and how it affects our societies. Generation back, and it is of great importance that we observe what he has said and understand briefly uh, what he has explained to all of us. Really, I am really down because I used to heard of his name. But this is the first time I witnessed his lectures. So I am really uh, proud of you, sir. I am so happy uh, to be part of this occasion to listen to all what you are saying and briefly give us the account of what tribalism is all about and how it affects societies and uh, how we should go about it as a society. So thank you very much, uh, thank you very much. Uh, just not to take much of your time, I am going to make sure that I call upon Momodu El Jata to give us uh, an account of a very good poem about the effects of tribalism. Momodo El Jata on stage. Please. Mr. Jata. Asalaamu As Alaikum to you all. I am Momodo Lamin Jata, a student of Stan 8 Papa and Senior Secondary School. You can carry on, sir. Yeah. Come to our um, reside a poem entitled Tribalism. The whole country is stuck up. Oh, I say, let us all distance ourselves from tribalism. Yet we are all trapped by it. Some talk about it but practice it by many. Some talk about it but never like to practice it. It is true Adam and Eve are all descended from heaven. That's why we are all progress. It is true we all dance to the natural laws. The air we breathe is free. The sunshine enter in all rooms. The moonlight visible by all. If so, why the difference? It is true we all eat food, answer the call of nature. Get, get sick and treated. Go to bed and rest. Get well or die. If so, why the difference? It is true someday we will all die, being poor or rich, black or white, red or semitic, blue eyes and pink nose. Short and bloomy hairs, if so, why the difference? It is true, ugly ones are found in all tribes, and yet the beautiful ones are not yet born. Full of marine mandinka, vice versa. It is for Jola, Wolof, Serere, and Manjako, if so, why the difference? With all what I have said, you just to demonstrate that we are all the same, I will disappoint you. I will solely say I will disappoint you at this stage. We are all tribalists consciously. I, my humble self, standing before you, some words penetrated from my mouth that go against some tribe in this country. But after reading Mr. Naban's book of tribalism on trial, I bow my head with him. I said I will never repeat it again. I am Mud Lamin Jata, the voice of my generation. Uh, thank you very much, Mud Lamin Jata. Uh, for that very good poem uh, that you have given us. So uh, let me call upon uh, uh, Seni Mane and uh, Lamin El uh to have a conversation uh, about uh, tribalism. Seni Marena or Seni Mane. Where is Seni? They come in. Okay, all right. The mic is all yours. Good evening, everyone. I'm 
My name is Tini Mami and his name is Polani Tani. We are students of our Tani, starting of our senior social media school and we are here to present a dialogue entitled Travel Agent. Only some words. Yes, why can't you imagine? It is terrible and very, very the mic, terrible. The mic. Hold your distance, my dear. What is terrible? It is not only terrible, my dear. It is terrifying and very, very terrifying. You might be mad. Yes, police officer. Don't put me into suspense. Tell me what you have in mind. I want us to start a gorilla war. Goodness me. What? Gorilla war? Yes, yes, Gorilla War. Against whom? The MFDC rebels? No. <laughs> the Boko Haram? No. no. <laughs> the Al Qaeda? I said no. Hey, then tell me, who are you going to wish a Gorilla War against? Mm. I want us to wait a Gorilla War against tribalism. Hey, tribalism. I have a challenge. The statement. What is your challenge with my statement that I just made, sir? <laughs> we tell you, it is because tribalism is not human, neither a material, no an animal. How can you find something that you can see? Oh, are you a schoolboy? No, 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 no. <laughs> Wait, let me help you. If anyone wants to be part of this gorilla war to fight against tribalism, Get a copy of this book, Tribalism on Trial by Alaj Nama, and push it down to people's throat. Hey, you have said another one. Push it down to people's throat. So, do you want to tell me that this book is a part of you? You have to push it down to people's throat. No, 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 hey. for example. Don't talk like a Facebook school boy. Ah. Ah. I simply mean to learn the book. Get a copy of yours and sacrifice to read it from cover to cover. Yeah. Simple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, but you are. I think I now understand your point of view. And thank you for educating me. And thank you that you listened to me. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you very much. That's a brilliant conversation. You have really inspired us. Thank you very much. So what we're going to do is uh, we are going to have uh, the review of the book, uh, which is of great importance because uh, we all know uh, the book. The book is uh, what the occasion is all about. Yes, the book is uh, what the occasion is all about. So I'm going to have uh, Mr. Alkali Cham, who is going to review the book for us and also introduce us who the author is. Mr. Cham, you're welcome. Um, thank you so very much, sir. Uh, I am very, very happy today to be very associated with this um, academic platform. Um, I have indeed learned today. Um, I witnessed directly the lectures of uh, one of the brilliant lecturers at the University of the Gambia. And I just today, when all of us go back to our various homes, uh, we're going to sleep very, very well in the sense that um, if we are tribal inclined, we'll try in as much as possible to expunge it you know, directly in order to have a better society. So thank you so very much, sir. Um, uh, good afternoon, or good evening, rather. Uh, I am very, very happy once again um, to be part of this whole activity. Uh, I got the opportunity to interact with this academic um, tool. That is uh, Mr. Navan's book. Um, I edited part of it, so I know what it contains. So it's a challenge to all of you to grab a copy um, so that um, we can read, and not only read, but we can also translate the information into a practical action so that we can still form a better society, I guess. So thank you. Um, my role today is to introduce the author, that is Mr. Navan himself, and also give a brief review of the book. Mr. Modu Navan was born in Nyamina Dankonku, now resident in Bakote. Mr. Navan would not need lengthy introduction because he is a well-known professional teacher. 
When he was appointed as the principal of Seno Gino and Seno Secondary School from 2012 to 2013, he made a tremendous impact while serving, and he served in that capacity until 2018. In September of 2018, Mr. Nawan made his way to government and was appointed as a senior teacher in Scan 8 Upper and Senior Secondary School in Bruford. The following year, he was elevated to an assistant head of department in the language and arts department. He also served as the press coordinator, the position he held up to this day and performs wonderfully. He introduces British parliamentary system of debate to his students also. He took the school to Gam African Institute for Leadership and National Debate Championship where his team scored enviable marks. In 2020, he trained students on BPS debating skills and participated in national debate championship organized by the University of the Gambia in which 44 senior secondary schools competed and his students whom he have trained emerged as victors. Um, the good news is they were comforted with the scholarship to obtain their bachelor's degree at the University of the Gambia. This was possible due to Mr. Naban's humble effort. Uh, Mr. Naban is the author to a book entitled Rishala, Letter to the Government. He also wrote a small handout on how to approach debate using the British parliamentary format. In addition, Mr. Naban wrote nearly 100 poems and short dialogues respectively, which will be soon combined as a reading materials for students. Today we are witnessing the launching of a book entitled Tribalism on Trial. Mr. Naman authored this book with the title Tribalism on Trial. Tribalism on Trial is a book that could not have come at a better time than now, looking at the uh, geopolitical situation of our country, the Gambia. Due to this time factor, I just want to do a brief review of the book. It describes how tribalism started on general perspective and gives details of what could happen as a result if tribalism continued to exist in our midst. Also, he gives some practical actions which may be required by the authorities to discourage the promotion of tribal ideologies. Mr. Noban, in this book, gave four formulas or recommendations which he considered key measures in expansion tribalism in our society. One, to stop promoting one's tribe over other tribes. Two, to learn and speak each other's language. Three, to promote the culture of intermarriage. Four, acculturation. The methods through which these recommendations can be transformed into concrete reality are well articulated in this book. The book has a chapter on norms and values of society. This chapter seems to be the most interesting chapter in the book. Mr. Naban maintains in the chapter that, except we hold firm to our norms and values as a society, otherwise we may fail in our attempt to form a formidable society. There is another chapter on religion where Mr. Naban maintains that we should embrace and practice religious tolerance at all costs. This includes to respect the right of religion, uh, right to religious practice, irrespective of our belief, among other things. There are a series of chapters following one another, which are beautifully titled are as follows. One, why should women be empowered? Two, birth control. Three, discouragement of same-sex marriage. Four, empowerment across the board. Women empowerment in conformity with religion. How can youth be empowered? What is worthy and worthless in our marriages? What is worthy and worthless in our workplaces? What is worthy and worthless in our politics? What is worthy and worthless in our religion? What is worthy and worthless in our education system? What is worthy and worthless in our healthcare system? What is worthy and worthless in times of trouble? What is worthy and worthless in our ceremonies, etc.? Interestingly, the last chapter is Naban Codes, which are meant to educate the reader on issues affecting the society. Um, I come to the end of the book review. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for giving us that brief, brief account of what we expect to read on the book. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, so, not to take much of your time, 
uh, we are going to call upon the man himself. The man himself. Uh, but Mr. Chan. Mr. Chan. Yes, I think uh, you have to give us uh, no, the introduction of the uh, author yes, himself. Yes, you did that, yes, yes. So, we're going to have the man himself. Mr. Nabani. I just would like you to come and brief us a little bit of uh, what inspired you to write the book. Because we all know writing of a book uh, is something we take much of your time, your sleepless nights, and also an inspiration. And uh, it's of great importance to have a book like that in a society today. So that is why it's important to have the man himself uh, so that he, co he can give us the reason why he come up with the idea of God's coming up with this important book uh, so that it can help the society in general, so that we can digest on what tribalism on trial is all about. Mr. Nabani, you welcome. The mic is all yours. Thank you very much, uh, Uzenu Mbu, Honorable Uzenu Mbu. Um, Follow, follow, mbe chiamano kontona bake, mbe sek hama jeta kontona, uh, mbe mfango fama kontona men keta sirifo, ba sirifo nabanti, uh, mbe mkule na onkul kontona kafo me buba jam, eh, buba ture, uh, aning na meye manding uh, represent jam, ba fana kontona bake, uh, onrebul jelal kamara fana mbe jansaya ateleng gabla um, leadati, Bafana Kontona, na Honorable Vice Principal of Bijan Scan Edla, Vice Principal of Mohammed Bojang, Bafana Kontona, um, the Chairman of NPP Sotajang, Olen Yusfa Sanyanti, Nakeba Kendelem, Olen Nafengofen Soto Dronsa in Vietnam, and no Aka Responde. Um, Nana Councilor Sotajang, Honorable Lamin Jamme, Mem fanamu ba kote la kanzulu ba tim ba fanau konto na atela fanau be sirin teng. The reason of writing this book, actually, I am of the habit that any time that I see things going on, I normally write something about it. But that thing always serve as a comprehension for my students. But this particular day actually prompted the writing of this book. I was on my way to school. My motorbike had a problem on the way. I parked it aside and I flagged down one of the car and I entered. Few people were there. But there are about three behind us who were talking about politics. And if I should repeat here, the type of words they were saying against one another strike you cannot you will not be able to understand that much of people of those caliber talking about tribal sentiment not thinking about any other issue except to talk about that so i was ashamed an elderly man was sitting beside me who was trying to talk but he was even afraid to talk. Who said, ah, you'll find a kebaba. Ah, you'll find a kebaba. In a low voice. Because he didn't want to say it loud. Because if they heard it, they may in fact insult him. So, I also addressed them. I said, sir, please. So, on the way going, I was... In my mind, I was turning in my mind, how can we end tribalism in this country? And this was my internal you know, thinking before I reached in Brufu. So that's why, in my opinion, maybe this is an inspiration. I was saying, 
We must not even talk about it. If you want to end tribalism in this country, we must not talk about it. Yes, we must address it, but we must not talk about it. In sentiments. That's one. Number two, we must try to learn one another's language. Because there is no better way to go into man's heart more than his or her mother tongue. Number three, intermarry. If you marry, let's say a Jola woman, you will be the last person to say anything against Jolas. Even if you do, it is not going to be deep in your heart, maybe for fun. So we must learn one another's language. And intermarry, of course. I used to tell my students, I said, if there is only one thing that can tell, take people to hell, and that is tribalism, I can boastly say, I am not a tribalist and I am going to heaven. Because it's something to me I think is not important. We were all created by God. The Quran says that. Ya ayyuhan nas, inna kalaknakum min zakarin wa unsa, wa ja'alnakum su'uban wa kabaila li ta'arafu, inna akramakum indallahi atakakum. I created all of you from one pair. Into nations and tribes. But the best among you is the one who is who has piety. And of course, this is what the Bible said. The Bible said, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall by no means enter in the kingdom of God. This is what the Bible said. I know if the Christians are here, they have a lot of interpretation for this verse. But we can see in the English language, the emphasis is on the righteousness. Righteousness. Most certainly, I'm telling you this. You can never enter heaven, except you are righteous. You are better than the Jew. So the conduct is more important. You can find a Jew whose conduct is good. You can find a Christian whose conduct is good. You can find a Muslim whose conduct is good. You can have different varieties of people whose conducts are good. So if that is the case, we can come together and develop our country and throw aside tribalism. It is an old signet. I said it in the book. I said all of us, and I do apologize in advance, if you read the book, you may be offended. But I'm not referring to you. Because I say all of us, we are all tribalists subconsciously. There is something at the back of your mind that you cater for your tribe that you didn't cater for the other tribe. But the sicknesses are different. You have to control it by religious injections, by moral lessons, by education, by thinking, that once upon a time we all come from one pair and if this is the case i see no reason why we must have problems because of tribalism and that tribal sentiment we put into politics is a problem this book is dedicated to all the political parties in this country that is why i extended my invitation to my brother who is mpp chairman that is Yusuf Asanya. Jalal Kamara. He is the head of uh, GAP. Today I am very, very glad and happy to be candid enough because I know one thing is certain. If nobody listens to Mr. Naban, my students will listen to me. And they are the future generation. <laughs> that alone, I'm contented with it. So I don't have to uh, go. This is a vast subject. I know I can be here continuing for hours, but I don't think it is right for me to do that. I thank you all for your kind attention. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Nabani. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we don't have uh, much to say, but just to tell you thank you very much uh, for having the inspiration the inspiration to write this book. And we all heard what has inspired him. We I used to say that uh, tribalism doesn't exist in the Gambia. 
Yes, because we are intermarried. We live together. We attend our ceremonies, funerals together. We do everything together. But tribalism is a political propaganda. It is a political propaganda. When there is politics, it's whereby you see tribal sentiments. So I think we have to understand that as a society, and I've said it, in every civilized society, we have to live together. And uh, our mentor has said it and give us brief accounts of what tribalism is all about and how to avoid it. We have to know that we belong to one another. We have to feel one another and be together. So it is of great importance. And that is why Mr. Nabani come with the inspiration of uh, writing the book for posterity. And he has also said it. Even if the society don't listen to him, his students uh, listen to him. And they are the future generation. They are the reason why we are doing all what we are doing today. So it is so important uh, to embrace this book and grab a copy of the book. So what we're going to do is, now we are coming to the launching of the book. We are coming to the launching of the book. So now what I'm going to do, we all see the book is here. For all of us, each and every one of us can get a copy of this book and read it and read it very very carefully so that you will understand what Nabani want to inspire the generation of Gambians because this one is for posterity this book can live for years it can even inspire generations to come so let's have a copy of it then we read it and make sure that we also inform our friends so that we will encourage people like Mr. Nabani. You know, in the Gambia, I all the time said it, uh, writers are not given the honor or the encouragement. They are not given the encouragement at all. Because today, when you look at the hall, you will understand that we have invited so many people many important people to just to make sure they come and witness this occasion but today what we have here and the letters we have distributed mr nabani is my witness he can attest to that and that's the fact it's the reality if at all we honor our writers give them encouragement we will not fit in here we will not even fit in here because the letters we have taken to people invited them to come and witness this occasion is too many and we have wasted our energy just to make sure that they will come and grace the occasion together with us but still it's not a problem we have all these honorable people who have accept our invitation and come and grace the occasion with us and we have a wonderful program it is really uh, the fact that we have a wonderful program so without wasting much of your time uh, we are coming to the launching of the book so I don't know who is uh, first going to launch the book who is first going to launch the book and how much are you going to launch the book with anybody <laughs> okay, so then let me uh, welcome Bigal. Okay, then you can uh, take the mic to them. You can take the mic to them. Each and every one of them will uh, tell you. Okay, then uh, what we're going to do is anyone who is going to learn the book, uh, Bigal, okay, wait, I'll do it. Who's going to learn the book first? Okay. okay. 
together with the man. Uh, okay, yeah. Together with the man. Okay. Yes. Uh, Mr. Hello. Mani, Hello. Uh, can I have you around with me? Uh, can you sign this one, please? Oh. Yeah. oh sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's okay. Yeah, you're welcome, sir. Thank you. Hello. Yeah. But you have to give me two, please. Okay. Yeah. What's your name? Three for Nabani. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Well, I want to express my gratitude, especially those on the high table and also to uh, the lecturer, Mr. Jaiti. Well, I'm very emotional today. And also, you know, I am I'm not a good speaker when it comes to public speaking but alhamdulillah god has endowed me with kids my children who are able to stand firm and face the wall especially now we are talking of uh, panaban and uh, also the sister also is there called satang nabane who is also a doctorate so alhamdulillah yeah i'm very pleased to have Two of the books at the moment. Thank you very much. Alhamdulillah. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, he has learned the book. Uh, he has learned two books uh, with uh, six hundred dollars each. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that's a wonderful gesture. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I would like to congratulate Mr. Nabani's father, who is sitting next to me. Without his hard work to nurture his children to be what they are today, through his sacrifice, they have produced doctors and teachers. As we all know, teaching is a noble profession. And uh, Mr. Nabani, we thank you for giving us someone who is an intellectual giant. And I'm so pleased to be here, invited here. I'm not only a friend, but a family. The Nabanis and the Jengs are neighbors. And the Jengs is my brother, and they are my brothers and sisters as well. So therefore, I'm happy to be here. On that note, I would also like to put this small token here to grab a copy. A copy that I would carry with me to my domicile that is in Finland and I hope my children will benefit from his intellect. And also, as the book itself is titled Tribalism, I prevail in a country where there exists no tribalism. There's another zim there, which is racism. So therefore, I hope that the zim will be something, as my good friend, the doctor just said, that we will all stood and fight against. I'm so happy, Mr. Nevani, for me to be here. Thank you so much.
Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much uh, for launching the book. Yes. yes. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Uh, once again, uh, I thank Mr. Naban for a job well done. Your uh, name? I thank his father who actually has overseen, I mean, his sons and daughters and have set them on the right course of history and they have entered through the right gate and here today we are benefiting from the fruits of a good parenthood. So I think it is a great honor, as my brother Mr. Mbop has just said, if uh, not undermining or underrating ST, ST is one of the greatest Gambian artists. But if ST was supposed to hold a, a concert here, people would be here since Fajr. Yeah, but Gambians, they are lukewarm. This is why most people don't even want to go into writing. I, for one, I prefer food for thoughts for them. Yeah, because you write for Gambians, they don't read. But anyway, we don't read for the, for the current generation, we read for posterity. And we write for them for that matter. I thank you very much, Mr. Naban, for just exposing one of the greatest evil, a Pandora box for the Gambian community. And make sure that any time you see ISM, I-S-M, at the end of any noun, students, I'm talking to you, I-S-M, at the end of any noun or verb, be careful, throw it away. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Mr. Naban, his father, and the entire family. I'm very grateful and I'm happy. It's a honor to see such our Gambian brother. I'm very grateful seeing our Gambian brother like Mr. Naban, who come up with the idea of fighting tribalism in our country. And this is, a, this is something that uh, I believe the Gambian should be very proud of, a brother who come up with this idea, and we have to be all out together to grab these books in order to know the, 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 the difference between tribalism and the way people has to interact, the interaction of the peoples in the country. And I believe today in, in the Gambia, many people didn't understand the difference between tribalism and ra racism. But tribalism is something that is killing, the, killing our, I can't say, I don't know how to say, but it, tribalism is something that is disturbing our community. Because many things that being a Mandinka, Jola, or whatever tribe you are, so you, your tribe is better than the other tribe, and this is not. Every tribe is equal. So let us try and understand. Let us all try to grab this book and read something that is in the book and make sure that we understand the meaning of tribalism. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Mr. Okay. And please, you announce the pledge that you're making one book or two books so that uh, they can also capture it, the media. Honorable. Uh, thank you very much. I'm so happy and enthusiastic to, me, to be in the midst of these eminent people, starting from Sheikh Imam Amajate, who I admire very much. In fact, I used to go to his mosque and to assist to his kutbahs, simply because of his truthfulness 
in the deen, for those who don't understand, in the religion and his forwardness, you know, when it comes to telling the truth to the society. But today, we are here to grace the occasion of this launching book by Mr. Modu Naban, who is a close ally to me, a neighbor, a friend, who invited me. I was supposed to be here with most of my executive members, but as we all know, time has always been a factor. For that reason, I'm going to apologize on their behalf because all of them got the invitation. Um, Mr. Naban, I have to encourage him and ask him not to desist from writing because to write is to elect, meaning to choose. I will, I will quote Gustave Flaubert, one of one Spanish writer who said, when we read, we choose the substance of our soul. So I'm encouraging all youth, students, to, to read. Reading is traveling. When you read, you discover so many things that cannot be explained only to yourself. So please keep reading so that you know the skies will be the limit for you guys especially the youth. You guys are the future generation and you guys are the future leaders of this country. So it is imperative and incumbent upon you to read. If you read, you will understand the affairs of the world. You will understand what the world politics is about. Thank you for your quiet attention. Thank you. Yeah, I'm launching three books. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable. Uh, you're welcome, sir. Can you help me to put this one in? I'm sorry. Help me to put this one in. Help me to put this one inside. Put this one. الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد صلى الله على نبينا محمد I am so much impressed I am very happy to be part of this important gathering particularly within the midst of the most educated people um, what had inspired today was very important issue. I was so much impressed by the lecturer, Hamajete, who gave a very wonderful lecture this evening. I personally learned a lot and benefited from his lecture. So I would like to thank him for his wonderful presentation. By extension, uh, I would like to thank each and everybody present here and to express my happiness and glad. So the program was very educative, very touching, very interesting. I also would like to thank the author, Mr. Navan, who, was, who is very hardworking. I want to express my glad that ScanAid has not rejected appointing Mr. Naban uh, as assistant HOD. Mr. Naban has played a very important role towards the development of ScanAid. So therefore, I would like to thank him and encourage him to continue with his good work that he has done. If you look at what he has done or what the lecturer has said this morning or this evening, we will see that it is in line with what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's uh, 
explains in one of the most important hadith, which says, none of you will enter paradise except you believe and none of you would believe until you love one another if you look at what the book is inspiring is about loving one another and to um, discourage tribalism so what mr nabans has done it is in line with allah the almighty said in the holy quran because he's trying to discourage tribalisms uh, in the country. Look at what this uh, verse says. The verse says, La yaskar kawmun min kawmin asa an yakunu khayran minhum wala nisaun min nisain asa an yakunu khayran minhunna. Meaning that no a people should ridicule another people. Perhaps they may be better than them. That is, people who have been ridiculed may be better than people who are ridiculing others. So therefore, the Quran is telling us, no a people should ridicule another people. Likewise, no woman should ridicule other women. Perhaps the women that have been ridiculed may be better than those who are ridiculing them. So therefore you can see, I am so much impressed uh, with what I have witnessed today. Because this is all about you know, trying to correct our society. And if you look at other uh, verse which the Allah said in the Holy Quran, He said, "Ya yuhan nas inna khalakna kum min zakarin wa unsa wa jalna kum suuban wa kaab kabaila ita arafu inna akrama kum inda lai atkakum." Meaning that, O oh mankind, I have created you from male and female, so they and made you into nation and tribe, so as to know each other or one another, but not to hate each other. So you can see uh, what Naban has done and what the lecturer also um, lectured us today uh, will go a long way to at least changing the society. So uh, once again, I would like to thank the author, Mr. Naban, and I encourage him to continue with his good uh, work. May uh, people adhere to his uh, book. Thank you so much. And I would like to launch one book. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mm -hmm. You're welcome, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I am very much impressed, mm -hmm. you know, to associate myself with this wonderful um, mm -hmm. program. Um, my interaction with the auto dates back to uh, uh, several years now. Uh, since Um, since I, um, I come to know him, I have found him to be uh, somebody who is really passionate about writing. Because sometimes I would be in my room um, very late at night uh, when I would just peruse through the Facebook and I would just come across, you know, some of his works that he has posted on Facebook. Uh, he is unlike me and, 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 and the likes of me, you know, who would be very, very lazy or who are lazy, you know, in uh, taking a pen and then writing, you know, to share our knowledge with people. But then I have realized that he is a man who is really, really committed to, you know, what he is doing especially when it comes to educating his students. Uh, that thing, that one I know that uh, he's a very committed individual and I would um, therefore uh, encourage him to keep up the wonderful work you know, that he has started. I know, I mean, uh, I have no doubt in my mind that in the very near future he would become one of the best writers of this country because that one I know. Um, writing to the extent of, you know, getting your work, you know, to a level where it will be peer-reviewed or refereed, you know, with, you know, very um, eminent writers of this world. I have no doubt about that. 
because he has a passion, he is committed, and then he lost what he is doing. So on that note, hence um, we've been sitting here for quite a time now. Uh, all what I uh, can say is uh, to encourage you know, the writer, the author, to continue you know, making more and more research you know, so that uh, you can contribute you know, to um, um, developing knowledge that would go a long way in benefiting not um, only the students of this country, but then it would go beyond this country. And in that I know, you know, he has that passion, he has that commitment, and then he has the zeal and will, you know, to be able to do that. On that note, uh, I would also contribute, you know, by launching one book. But then I want the author to reach out to me, you know, by next week, I would also be launching 10 books for the benefit of your students in your classroom. You know, then once I launch it, you give it to your students, you know, who would share it, whoever is lucky, and that's it. But thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, it is a pleasure for me to be here. Thank you. This is yours. The mind is all yours. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you so much, uh, the MC. And uh, good evening to you all. I observe the presence of the high table here. And uh, also, my I mean, special thanks would go to uh, Dr. Jayte for his brief and comprehensive introduction he has given to us about tribalism. Uh, I would like to congratulate the author of the book, uh, Pa Modu Naban. Uh, the lecturer here, Mr. Jayte, has touched something tribalism. The word I learned so many things from him within this short period. This, I mean, Zoom. I don't know who introduced it to the dictionary or to English, but it's, it's, it's all evil. Tribalism, nepotism, racism, uh, I mean, extremism. So we can all see wherever this Zim came, it's evil. So something evil should not have space in our societies, in our communities. So, and um, as the author titled the book, it's in trial, tribalism. So, I don't know where that we, the Gambians, will give the tribalism to a, a trial within our country. We all have to join together and fight this cause. This is not political, it's not, it's, it's not religious, but it's something that is growing in us, and we all have to fight it together. Otherwise, when it got, I mean, grown or matured, I mean, it means trouble has already grown in the country. So, on that note, I will urge every Gambian to join the cause to fight tribalism. As for the auto, uh, we all know, has, or I would say some of us knows the hurdle he has gone through in order to launch this book. But due to his determination and commitment, I mean, he achieved it today. So, I know everyone here is happy, but I can say I am proud to have a young writer, young intelligent writer in my community, like Pamodu Naban. So I am proud to see him, and I wish we see many of Pamodu Nabans growing in Bakoti. And they, I mean, I will, I mean, urge all the youths of Bakoti to, I mean, emulate Mr. Naban. Uh, in his course to change the face and the thinking of the young Gambians. On that note, I thank you all. And I will launch uh, three books. He said he will launch three books. Thank you very much, Honorable. Uh, thank you very much. I think I have to reach out to Mr. Sidinjai. Yes. Uh, uh, where is Mr. Sidinjai? Mr. Jai is here. He wants to launch also a book. Uh, Mr. Jai, come on. Give us some remarks. Yeah, thank you so much. The yes, uh, for the benefit of the other listeners, like Kamarabha said, 
anyinyata wa nyama le bari this mentality of tribalism nyanta ka faham aka fo kan jumalela in our society wa kaulu nimbe diamula akuma ta bake nka diamu nyoyo karola wa fanala do nga lonko uh, the context of the book of the suffering men na wolem tuba county but tribalism in general nka memfo oka for in our local languages so woto ngamira kumata bake as kamaraba alude ntala diamo nyinga direct to the local language uh, mr nabani mumole time alonko alhamdulillah funding ke funding ke be nyim banko kan e nyanta contact na nyanta sewola la kola bakel uh, because be ninka for banko kan ko youth empowerment this is one of um, uh, the key role in empowering youth funding ke o me along ko ay time o soto ay energy soto and with the little resources ka seferoke uh, buko la buko membe konyi wanyanta encourage la bakele in society adu ngajele nga men soto jang as uh, the guest speaker to this occasion I bundal maja na men yalan ko menu kumata bak the institutions that are responsible for this aspect wala most especially the arts and uh, arts and culture e nyanta kala molle to men yalan ko ye findi society il kono the writer soul men yalan ko be society il to ye encourage bake e fangol ye findi kan e ke nyini society il kono e ke nyini community il kono e ka encourage men o dila ah nabani ku jamaala fotala karola jam bake mole me alon ko definitely funding ke olu ah nse wotan contenta la kola bake nyimu funding ke ol la bengoleti adu ngaje ko funding ke o fana be nyante emulate la comme mr nabani be nyame banku din kendo ka nyinake nyimbe banku din kendo la sarato konole kaje ko ne kuje la banko kan ye fero ke iba bayno la nyadi mr nabani ala role play as a good citizen ka safero ke bunda la me alon ko bi wala be society batande kan me alon ko wala mo tribalism ti o to be nga kata nyim buko nyi be nga copy nyi soto nga kata wi encourage others also buko be tar la daoda mo be a sang adu ni a sam fana amanke ko eba karele e bulle damade hani amanke fana ko e betale ni ya sang ya landi tabulo kan hani a make so membe saferin buko kono ya karan ya faham adu nga make so membe buko kono fana ni ya faham ye barala ya je in society fana modul be barakan la woto nabani uh, once again mba fole ko thank you so very much uh, for this encouragement and content abake and then everybody present here am bal be konto nangal tendo thank you mr mbo uh, ah thank you very much cd uh, for those wonderful remarks uh, now what we're going to do is uh, we make the closing remarks uh, but before making the closing remarks i want to uh, inform you that we will be coming knocking on your doors uh, to make sure that you get a grab a copy of this book because there are many of them lying on the table and uh, we have to knock on doors uh, to make sure that they get a copy of the book and inspire themselves inspire generations to come because it's of great importance to have the book so that's it so i want to make sure that uh, i go to mr nabani so that he can make the closing remarks to him uh, thank you very much, each and every one of you, for coming. Uh, we are very much pleased and so happy uh, to have you in this opportunity. So, Mr. Nava, I want you to make the closing remarks on a place. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Malibé kondona, malibé yeda. Mekwala ali esi mayabala, ringa da kendea. Yine mu muslime ati, yine mu hadamadi ati, yine mu muwe ati. Pour nous, nous sommes tous les deux. 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 Nous sommes tous les de
ñim bukuloñ ci ak mata bakel katum moli men be janni kil wakil ye kopi soto ya karan e be moli men na falala o fana mo ku balati mo baraji balati son contenta bake i thank each and every one of you who attended this book launching and a lecture and a book launching for that matter i thank you very much for coming may god almighty bless you um give you prosperity long life and upon all of that give you a hidayah and at the end of the day you can be taken to heaven ala baraka bake alama alayka ra kalbi salam ah baraka bake abadi wolu la lon ko la be kamar ba official bi ko kandro ah mbali ah ah kelintale sukudale ah event gadim barbitu na tak fa book launch ni la wala alhamdulillah book launch ni ñu fenta banta au kamala le programme on sera là même boko mba fala le ko fo sila ko tay mba fala le ko ñu buko ak kuma da baake le pour ka sank mo mon ding ge ñu buko sanno ave kuma la baake ko to mbali tentu la mbali jela mbali ni mbara la mba fala le ko tribalism on trial bari ibn na fa you know you have a hard soul so